رسوله الكريم سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين To pick up on yesterday's theme about the Quran being very peculiar and unique about in the ter in terms of its ultimate objective which is to speak to the human heart but also in terms of the rhetorical linguistic devices it uses one such device is to you know when we speak we 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 either speaking to we have a speaker or we have the first person and we have the second person and we have the third person right so it's i you and him and so the quran does this interplay when it wants to speak directly to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for example in terms that endears Allah to the Prophet, then it speaks directly to him. He says, Ya ayyuhan nabi. Oh, you, the, and, and it, it, it addresses him with an honorific, that nabi, that you have this title. You are a person of status. When, however, the, the Quran wants to gently reproach him for using an approach for using a method in da'wah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reservations about, then, he speak, then the Quran speaks to us in reference to him. So you see that? And so he talks to us. He says, Abasa wa tawalla anja'ahul a'ma. He frowned and turned away when the blind man came to him seeking advice. The Quran is speaking directly to us and the subject or, or the, the, the target there is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even though that message is first being communicated to the Prophet himself. See? So this is a rhetorical device that it uses all the time. Sometimes you've Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks and the Quran is entirely the word of Allah but the actual speaker is you and I. So the surah that we recite every salah, Surah Al-Fatiha, if you pay careful attention to it there, Allah is not speaking in that particular surah in the sense of being the speaker, the first person, second person, and third person. He is being spoken to. So who do you think is speaking in that particular surah? You and I are speaking. We are the ones who are praising him. We start by saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Maliki Yawm deen now, if you want a loan from someone, you have to be nice to him. If you want to curry favor with someone, you have to be nice to him. If you want to plead your case, you have to be nice. So you speak in terms that are respectful, worthy of praise. And when you're speaking to Allah, you start by saying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is to this creator, sustainer, and evolver of the entire universe, or double universes. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Maliki Yawm deen And then you make very clear what your position is vis-a-vis -vis Allah. It says, Iyaka Na'bud. We indeed worship you. Wa Iyaka Nasta'een. And we seek from you. We are doing all the talking in this. So, so why have you spoken so graciously about Allah? Why have you spoken with such respect and love towards Allah? Because, and what is it that you want? You want guidance. So you are asking Allah, 
O oh Allah, guide us to the right path. You have some idea of what that right path is. So he says, Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim. One marker by which we recognize that right path is the fact that you have showered your benevolence unto them. Not those who have gone astray or who have earned your wrath. So Allah responds in the remainder of the Quran explaining these two things to us. What the Sirat al-Mustaqim is, what is Sirat al-Ladina an'amta alayhim, and how did those, who, the maghdub, those who have earned the wrath of Allah, how did they go as 